guys, Korok117 here with a lovely new video. There's a beautiful day here on the Oregon coast, which is a perfect day to make meat. So currently, in both of these three gallon batches, they are both bubbling nicely. Yeast is still eating the sugars in them, and it's going good. These two are experiments. This one is using apple, but instead of using water, I used watermelon juice. And as you can see through the airlock here, the methane that is being produced is pushing the water down and out the top up there. I know, it's not focused very well. I'll get used to it. First video. This one is a tropical blend of pineapple, peach, and banana. Banana is what happened with all this gunk up in here that's sticking to the top of the sides inside the bottle. I actually gummed up the other airlock I had on it and I had to put a different one on it. That's fun. So that's something new. I probably won't use banana again. It's just a, hey, let's see what happens kind of thing. But today we're going to be using a five gallon. We are using wildflower honey, five 12 ounce boxes of uh, raspberries, five for 12 ounces per gallon, and then one raspberry preserve, mostly just to help the process for more sugar because I don't think this with the rose hips, which I didn't even know existed until six months ago, um, probably won't be able to keep the process of fermentation up for a very long time. So I expect this one probably not to last forever. But rose hips smell entirely like roses. And by what I can gather, I'm guessing that this batch is probably going to be a little tart. I forgot to mention with this that the cleaning products, because I have to do this first, is clean this out. And then after that, I'll be using spring water to fill the rest of it in. Just store-bought gallon jug spring water. That's usually enough, or really anything you need, to keep going. On another note too, with the wildflower honey, if I'm using just honey, then I'll be a little bit more picky on the kind of honey I use. I'll try to get some that's more local. And other than that, Next step is to clean this bottle and sanitize it. So, a couple of things to note before I continue is I've added the sterilizer into this. And the sterilizer I use is Starsight. And it uses an acid, and that's why I'm not taking any chances in using rubber gloves. Because I like to be safe, uh, sometimes. This here, the stuff that's in it, the reason why it's important that everything's clean and sanitized is because if it's not the bacteria that's in this right now without it being cleaned before putting the honey and everything's into it could change the flavor of the mead or outright destroy it and none of us want that to happen so after letting it sit for just a little bit watering all the plants i have around here gave it enough time just to kind of work its magic around. I get one of these giant pipe cleaner kind of things to get the edges of these garboys. Kind of a pain to clean otherwise. If my camera angles are all over the place. Again, first time doing one of these. So it'll be a little bit. Normally I just go out on hikes, which is what I intend to do again here soon. And then the next step is just to drain it and rinse and repeat 
until all the foam and suds is outside is out of it. Once you don't have any more foam coming out of it, that's usually a good indication that you're good to go. I have no idea how these things taste or if I'm even supposed to eat them, but whatever. Oh, it just tastes like a rose. That's really sour. No, nope. there's more tart than sour. Hey. All right, so we're back. Uh, we mixed in the ingredients, the raspberries, the honey, the hero's hips, and all those little bits in there is all the yeast. Down in the honey, there's also the preservatives for the uh, raspberry stuff too. And now we get to mix it, which isn't entirely fun because it's heavy and awkward because it's heavy. could get a contraption that mixes this better, but by hand, so if the one gallon jugs, you can really get the honey to mix in with the water really well, but when you're using 10 pounds of honey, not too much. So, now that it's shaken, the airlock goes on next. The airlock just gets water up onto it, onto these lines. And what it does is it prevents oxygen from getting it back into the bottle because then it can ruin it. And there we go. Bubbling nicely. It's only been 10 minutes since we mixed it together. It's up in here. Eventually this will heat down. Kind of like how these ones right here are. The honey used to be up here. Now it's slowly eating away as some of this, some of the sugars in that aren't really eaten. Well, that should be it for our video today. Next one's my hopefully will be hiking. But, should turn out to be an okay batch. We'll find out in about 8 to 10 months. Until then, have a good day. For those of you from the Wisdom of Odin, tell the hall. Skull.